Hey everybody, this is Oren Zucker, and on behalf of my good friend Dan Eberts, welcome to the first TypeMonkey 3D tutorial. TypeMonkey 3D is a new add-on for the original TypeMonkey that converts a normal build to 3D. You'll need the original TypeMonkey to use it. It's not a standalone script. If you already own TypeMonkey, make sure to download the latest copy. We've optimized it for use with TypeMonkey 3D. This tutorial won't go over how to use TypeMonkey. If you haven't used it before, head over to the product page on AE Scripts and check out the tutorials there. Ever since we've launched TypeMonkey, we wanted to create a 3D version, but it just wasn't practical with the ray trace or the C4D renderers. Now with the introduction of the advanced 3D renderer in AE 2024, we could finally make that happen. Let's go over the basics and then we'll do a deeper dive and show you what's happening under the hood. First, you have to create a TypeMonkey build. TypeMonkey uses the classic 3D renderer. If you've got a different renderer active, it'll ask to switch it over for you automatically. Once that's done, you're ready for TypeMonkey 3D. You can either click the 3D button to launch the new script or launch it from the Windows menu. If you launch it from the button, you won't be able to dock it. If you want to do that, just launch it from the Windows menu. Once you have that set, pick an HDR to light the scene. We'll just use the default one for now, and then click 3D it. In a few seconds, you'll have a 3D TypeMonkey build ready to go. The first time you build, it'll ask you to manually select the TypeMonkey HDR as a light source for the environment light. This will only happen on your initial build. Once you do that the first time, if you end up changing HDRs, it'll do that automatically. If you don't do that, After Effects will use its default HDR as a light source. And once the build is done, you can mess around with the camera, the materials, the geometry, lighting, and the environment map. What happened was the original comp was duplicated, the renderer was changed to advanced 3D, and all the UI settings were applied to all the text layers. A bunch of effects controls were created and applied to the master control layer, and if you unshy the comp, placeholders for each of the text layers were generated. These will only come into play if you want a texture applied to the face of the text. To do that, you can select one of the images we've supplied in the image map dropdown, or you can use your own custom image and click add image. The image comp also has effects controllers that relate specifically to the transformations of the image map. The UI mainly controls the 3D text features available in the current version of the advanced 3D renderer. We built in a bunch of presets, including preset looks that control the geometry and the material settings, as well as color and opacity presets. References for these settings and links to more in-depth information on the advanced 3D renderer will be in the FAQs. The Environment section. This section of the UI is a series of preset HDRs that have a huge effect on any text layer that has either specular or metal settings greater than zero. You can also import your own HDRs. It's very easy to change after building by selecting a new one and clicking Update. We have a button here called Animate Rotation. This will apply a constant drift to the rotation of the environment map. This will keep the reflections moving. You can adjust the speed after the build using the environment map effects controls. This last checkbox, Add Y Rotation, is a bit different from the rest of the UI settings. This is the only button that will affect the original layout of TypeMonkey. It adds a Y rotation every fourth or fifth word. We put image mapping in a section called post build because other than the environment update feature, it's the only part of the UI that needs to have an existing 3D build to work. When you click add image, it'll run through a process that creates a fill in classic 3D and a mat in advanced 3D. Remember those placeholders? Well, in the texture comp, those layers get replaced by image maps and then parent it to the text, which is then used as a track mat. The mat is created by duplicating the original 3D comp and changing the bevel, side, and back to black. The face is white, so we got a clean luminance mat. Once all that is done, it'll place the results back into the original comp, shy the mat, and finally add controllers to the fill that'll make it easy to adjust the image maps. Because this approach is based on duplicating the original 3D build, if you want to go back and make changes to the original build, like changing the geometry of the text or messing with the camera transformations, once you've applied an image map, you'll have to click Update to have the image realign with the new changes. Okay, so let's say you have a texture applied and you want to just try a new one. No problem, just select a new one and click Update. 
and it'll swap them out. So that in a nutshell is TypeMonkey 3D. I encourage you to download a free trial and mess around with it yourself. Make sure to check the product page and the FAQs for more details. So from Dan Eberts, I'm Warren Zucker. Thanks for watching and enjoy TechMonkey 3D.